Chapter 5, Expect an Abundance. Expect an Abundance. The mind is a powerful magnet, and as such, it attracts whatever corresponds to its ruling state. Expectation dictates what that ruling state will be, and therefore governs what corresponds to the mind and is attracted into your life. Expectation can be either a blessing or a curse, but either way, it is certainly one of the most powerful unseen forces in your life. What are you doing to increase your income? If your answer to that question is nothing, or if you are just beginning to think seriously about what you could do, you have probably not yet grasped the ideas presented in the previous chapters. You should be aware that the chapters in this book resemble the individual pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Each chapter is related one to the other in such a way that if we put them all together, we can see the entire picture. Since you are now well into the heart of the book, I would ask you to pay particularly close attention to the ideas which follow, so you can use them to successfully tie all the pieces together. You will soon discover that if the ideas in this chapter are applied with intelligence, expectation can be the triggering mechanism which attracts into your life every good you desire. However, if you do not exercise extreme caution, expectation can also turn just as rapidly into a destructive lethal enemy. Therefore, you must be cognizant of how you are exercising this invisible but powerful force. I believe you already understand you cannot have wealth in your material world until you have first visualized the wealth in your mind. But what does this really mean? It means that before any of us can even begin to overcome the poverty which surrounds us in our external world, we must first conquer the impoverishment that is buried deep within ourselves. In the preceding pages, I explained how prosperity, properly understood, is simply the inward awareness of the opulence, wholeness, and completeness that abounds within the spiritual realm. In other words, it is impossible to feel poor when you are conscious of being enveloped in the protective care of a loving God, universal spirit, or whatever else you may wish to call the spiritual center of our universe. Let me repeat, there never is and there never has been any lack of supply other than that which we have created for ourselves because of our own limited awareness. The Light Bulb Tale the following story should help underscore this great truth about your infinite source of supply. Visualize, if you will, a poor couple who have spent their entire lives living in the backwaters of civilization. Then imagine them suddenly transported to a small village where, to their astonishment, they discover that their new home is being lighted by electricity. Since they have had no previous experience with that force, in fact, they have never even seen an electric light before, they are completely mesmerized by the little eight-candle power electric bulbs which light their home. Several months pass by, and eventually the couple start to regard the light bulbs as an accepted facet of modern life. However, one day, a smooth-talking salesman appears at their door, telling them their eight-candle power electric bulbs are no longer adequate for their needs. He tells them they should buy the new 60-candle powered bulbs, which have just come on the market. Since the couple has now become slightly more adventuresome, they agree to let the salesman demonstrate his new fangled product. As soon as the new bulb is plugged in and the electricity turned on, the couple becomes transfixed once again. For not only does the new bulb emit a light, it actually illuminates the entire room. Never in their wildest fantasies had the couple ever imagined that the source of the new flood of illumination had been there all the time. Nor had they realized this enormously increased light could originate from the same current which fed their little eight-candle bulb. It's strange. We smile at the naivete demonstrated by this poor couple, but the truth is most of us are even less aware of our own power than this couple was of the power of the electric current. For, like the couple in the story, we never even dream that the infinite current which surrounds us could flood our lives with a light more magnificent than the most powerful light bulb ever devised. We never grasp the simple truth that all we need to do to improve our results 
is to plug a larger, more prosperous idea into the infinite current of life. Instead, most of us strangle our supply with energy-impoverished thoughts of doubt and fear, which entirely cut off the inflow of prosperity. I want to exhort you, therefore, to resolve to change your habitual pattern of thinking now. That's right, change it now. And remember, the stream of plenty always flows towards the open, expectant mind. You must understand you already have in substance, if not in physical form, everything necessary to produce prosperity in your material world. The two determining factors for you to attain the results you want are one, desire, and two, expectation. You might have been living up to this point the way the masses live their entire lives, simply because you are harboring the false assumption that desire is the only thing which you need to reach your goal. But you must understand, if your desire is not combined with the expectation that you will receive what you desire, you will find yourself continually frustrated and disappointed whenever you begin working towards any kind of material goal. When you cast your mind back over the experiences of your own life, you will soon realize that whenever you did reach a desired goal, you not only desired that goal, but you actually expected to attain it as well. Let me repeat, desire without expectation is nothing more than wishful thinking. And as we have already pointed out, since the vast majority of people wish positive but expect negative, they seldom attain what they are after. In his magnificent book, The Science of Getting Rich, the author, Wallace D. Waddles, gave us an excellent definition of desire. He said, Desire is the effort of the unexpressed possibility within, seeking expression without, through your action. In other words, your ideal, dream, or goal, this wealth you wish to see materialize, can only become a desire once it has been properly planted in universal creative intelligence more commonly referred to as the subconscious mind. However, once your desire has been firmly established, it is the expectant attitude which ensures that your goal or dream is not uprooted or replaced by any opposing or competing ideas. In an effort to help you kindle this expectant attitude towards real wealth, let us journey together through some of the preceding chapters in this book. As you will remember, we began by discussing money. We attempted to understand the true nature of money, and we arrived at the conclusion it is a useful, obedient servant. However, like all servants, we learned it is useful to us only when it is being employed. Therefore, we concluded money must always be kept working or otherwise circulating. For if it is not, as we have already mentioned, it will become as useless as old newspapers stashed away in an attic. Next, we explored the idea relating to exactly how much money you want. You became aware of the fact it is necessary to be very specific about how much money you need to provide the things you want to live in the style you choose. Once this figure had been decided upon, we then examined the importance of building the image of ourselves already in possession of this wealth on the screen of our conscious mind. We also talked briefly about the manner in which images are formed and the role they play in our lives. Then we examined the idea of consciousness and how it was imperative to develop the prosperity which we seek in our mind first before we can ever attain it in our bank books. We learned how we had to bathe our subconscious minds in a concept of prosperity and how we had to see wealth as being already in our possession. In the chapter, Let Go and Let God, we became aware we were co-creators. We became aware of how we had the ability, in our conscious mind, to choose any thoughts we wanted, to build any images which we chose to build. We then learned how we could turn that image over to our subconscious mind, the spiritual center of our being, and that part of us which takes any idea or image we give to it, then willingly accepts it and instantly begins to move it into physical form in our world. We discovered that when we truly understand this creative process of life and our role in it, expectation becomes a natural mindset, regardless of how things might appear in our outside world or what others might be saying to us. 
We were told this absolute and unshakable faith or belief in the fact that our images are moved into form is essential if we are to become successful in our lives. We also gained an awareness that all of this will happen once we begin to see ourselves as non-physical entities encased in physical bodies. Once we realize our bodies are nothing other than the physical manifestation of our non-physical selves, we will understand they are obedient servants of our minds, and they move and have their being according to the vibratory rate of our minds. Only then will we be consciously aware that everything which now exists in our physical world was first preceded by the images we chose to plant in our marvelous minds. And everything which is going to appear in the future in our physical world will be nothing other than a carbon copy of the picture we are now in the process of developing. You must reach the stage in your mental development where you don't just believe that your image of material wealth will manifest in form, but you actually know it will. It is at that point you will begin to expect to receive the physical expression of your image of wealth. No one and no thing will be able to cause you to see in your mind anything but that. Always remember, the truth is not always in the appearance of things. An elderly wealthy gentleman being interviewed by a newspaper reporter was asked at what point he became successful. His answer was, I was successful when I was sleeping on a park bench because I knew where I was and I knew where I was going. At this juncture in the book, you know where you are and you know where you are going, so expect to get there. Your desire is the motor power which will move you in the direction of your dream, and expectation is the attractive force that will move your dream in your direction. So see yourself moving towards the wealth you visualize, and see the wealth you visualize being attracted to you. Know that you will come in contact with the wealth that is moving to you and at the right time. No one knows what period of time must elapse, so don't become impatient if it doesn't materialize overnight. All we know for sure is a certain period of time must elapse, and the period of time which your image must take to materialize is governed by the law of gender. The law of gender decrees there is a gestation or incubation period for the manifestation of all seeds, and make no mistake about it, the image of wealth you chose to build on the screen of your conscious mind and then turned over to your universal mind is a seed, and it is growing into physical form in the most fertile field that you could ever conceive of. It is not necessary at this point for anyone else to see this new wealth. It is not even necessary for anyone else to believe you will receive it. The only thing necessary is that you see it and you believe it. You see, the premise that Napoleon Hill built his life's work on is absolutely true. Anything the mind can conceive and believe, it will achieve. Expressed another way, as a person thinketh in their heart, so are they. The early Greeks referred to the subconscious mind as the heart. Note that your subconscious mind can no more change or alter your image than an ordinary mirror can reflect back to you an image different than the objects you are holding in front of it. But remember, as you think, so are you, does not mean as you tell people you think, or as you would wish the world to believe you think. It means your innermost thoughts, which only you control, know the truth. That is what you expect, so that is what you attract, and that is what you will ultimately receive. Through studying the power of your subconscious mind, or studying in depth the power or modus operandi of spirit, it will become easier and easier for you to come to expect the good you desire. For all things are possible in spirit, because in its original state, spirit is a sensitive, unseen, creative substance whose sole purpose is expansion and fuller expression, in other words, growth. However, spirit or creative substance can only reproduce, expand, and express itself in a greater way in accordance with the limitation placed upon the instrument through which it expresses itself. Since spirit is flowing to and through you, you are the instrument. Therefore, 
The image or the ideas you hold in your mind dictate the limits which are placed on the spiritual power flowing to and through you. In this respect, you may be compared to the light bulb the elderly couple had in their home. You are an instrument through which spirit flows, just as a light bulb is an instrument through which electricity flows. When the old couple plugged in the eight candle powered bulbs, the electricity was limited in its expression by the power of the bulb. However, when the salesman plugged in the 60 candle powered bulb, the electricity was free to express itself to a greater degree. And yet, even then, it was limited by the form through which it flowed, namely the new bulb. A hundred candle powered bulb would have permitted an even greater expression and so on, and so on. Therefore, if you held an image of poverty, that is what you will have seen expressed in your results, or your material world. However, since you are now holding an image of prosperity, that is the image which you will see expressed in your material world. The non-physical creative substance, which is spirit, flows to and through the seed, and expresses itself in its polar opposite, physical form. As we have discussed on previous pages, the modus operandi of spirit is law, and of course, the law of attraction is a cause, and growth or expansion is the effect. So keep visualizing yourself as a perfectly endowed spiritual instrument, without limitations of any kind. For if you do, you will find it easy, in fact natural, to expect the good you desire. You will understand that doubt simply obstructs the unfoldment of your desire. So when you continually originate images of doubt, you know you will never see the materialization of the image you desire. Only the reproductive creative spirit of life knows what you think until your thoughts become physical facts and materialize in your body or your affairs. Then everyone with whom you come in contact may know because the intelligent energy rewards you openly by reproducing your thoughts in physical form. As a man thinketh, as you think, that is what you become, should be kept in the forefront of our mind constantly. For when you expect something wonderful to happen, that is watching and praying without ceasing. At those times when we are not feeling quite up to par physically, or our mind is becoming clouded with doubt, we should realize it is time to pray with all the more conviction, or work at developing a stronger feeling of expectation. You must guard your mind constantly against doubt, because it is a crippling vibration. Whereas most of the preceding pages have been dedicated to the power of positive thoughts, namely the building of the image of prosperity, doubt is the flip side of the coin, or negative thinking. And when you are entertaining doubts, what you are actually doing is creating images of the things you don't want. Moreover, justifying your doubt to yourself by originating reasons for it or rationalizing will do you absolutely no good, for you cannot strike a bargain with your subconscious mind, because the subconscious has no sense of fairness, no sense of humor, and it cannot even determine what is good or what is bad for you. Every image just is to the subconscious mind. Therefore, your negative, worrisome, doubtful images will be accepted just as quickly and as willingly as will your images of prosperity. The instant you become aware you are entertaining thoughts which create doubt, become quiet, start relaxing, and image yourself already in possession of the prosperity you desire. When you do this, you are altering the mental current which is flowing into your marvelous mind. Expect with all your consciousness to receive your good in your material world. You think in secret, and it comes to pass. Environment is but your looking glass. James Allen wrote those words three quarters of a century ago, but they are still true today, and they will always remain true in the future. So program your personal computer to expect good results. And that is exactly what you will receive. Pat and John's story. As I was writing these lines, I received a telephone call from a beautiful couple, Pat and John, whom I would definitely number among my close friends. They called to tell me they were moving into their new home the following Tuesday, and I was elated to hear this delightful news. You see, less than two months earlier, 
I spent approximately five hours talking with them about the image-making concept and the awesome power of the expectant attitude. During the course of the conversation, I asked John what he wanted more than anything else in the world. And after a long period of silence, he looked me squarely in the eye and said, I would like Pat, Tony, Pat's daughter, and me to be in a house of our own by Christmas. And I would like my son to spend Christmas Day with us. Although John's son lives with his mother, he and John have a very warm relationship. I then asked him why he didn't just go out and make his dream become a reality. He replied he couldn't, because he lacked the money to do so. I then had the audacity to remind John that all things are possible for those who believe, and therefore he definitely could make his dream come true. Perhaps he just didn't know how to go about doing it. The three of us then spent about an hour discussing the kind of house they wanted until we all had a very clear image of their dream home etched upon the screens of our minds. We talked about expectation, and I explained to them that many good things would begin to happen for them the instant they began to expect to be in the house for Christmas. Sure enough, the first thing that happened to them once this new attitude permeated their consciousness was that both their minds moved over to the how-to side of the ledger. New ideas began to flow like water, and questions came forth in rapid succession. How much would a house like this cost? How much would they have to put down? Where would they find such a house? To get answers to their questions, they needed the expertise of a real estate agent. So I suggested John call Natalie Kaufman, a lady I know who is a real estate professional, and to tell her of his dream. He should ask her what he would need in the way of finances to make his dream or image become a reality. Finally, I told him he would have to get busy focusing all of his conscious attention on earning the amount of money he would need to achieve his goal, and he would have to actually expect to earn whatever the amount was, and in the allotted time. Surprisingly, it turned out that the amount of money they required was far less than the figure they had previously thought it would be. Moreover, since John and Pat are both commissioned salespeople, their road to achieving this financial goal was not riddled with as many obstacles as is the road for many other people. Nevertheless, without going into detail about the many hurdles they did have to overcome, suffice it to say, with Natalie's help, Pat and John succeeded. Next Tuesday, they move into their new house. Next Saturday is Christmas Day. Just before I hung up the receiver, I congratulated them on their new home, and I asked John if his son would be spending Christmas Day with them. Quietly, but with a voice brimming over with happiness, he answered, Yes, he is. And it sure makes a difference when you expect what you do want rather than expecting what you don't want, doesn't it, Bob? I just smiled and said, Yes, John, it sure does. Many people today live their entire lives on the basis of seeing is believing. That is to say, the only images they get emotionally involved with are the ones they can discern with their physical senses. But the individuals of real vision down through the ages have always known the overriding principle is what you see is what you get. Expressed somewhat differently, what this means is that the images in people's minds actually precede the concrete images which pervade our material world. Therefore, you should be aware of the fact that the fascinating physical world we see before us, with all of its conveniences for making our lives more comfortable, has been built largely by image makers. Men and women of vision who knew what they could do and expected everything else to fall into place, regardless of what their critics might say to the contrary. For example, two young mechanics from Ohio introduced us to an entirely new kingdom by building and holding an image of an airplane in flight. But if they had not expected to succeed, they would surely have quit the first time they met with defeat. Since they did not, we are now only hours away from anywhere in the world. In fact, we can even reach other planets within a very short span of time. Edison built and held an image which illuminated the entire world, and as a result, we no longer need to spend half of our days groping in darkness. You should realize that you too can change your world, just as John and Pat did, by building an image in your mind of exactly the way you would like to live. But always remember, 
you will only receive what you truly expect, not what you only wish for. There are three certain steps for achieving prosperity in all areas of your life. Number one, build the image in your mind. Number two, turn it over to spirit. Let go and let God. Number three, expect with your heart and soul that spirit will reward you openly for your faith. Expect an abundance. I hope you enjoyed this video. We put a lot of good information up here and it causes everything in your life to get better. If you'd like us to notify you every time we put a new video up, hit subscribe and then turn on notifications. Check out all our videos and we will notify you when we put a new one up.